Hello and good afternoon and welcome to the Language of Business presented by BMO Bank. We're proud to be a sponsor. Uh, we're, part, we're proud to participate and we look forward to uh, really sharing with you some great information about the Language of Business. Uh, along with me today is my um, co-senior manager, Leticia Poole. Uh, you can go ahead and advance this, the, uh, there we go. Uh, Leticia uh, Flores Poole, we both are senior manager and managers for the program called BMO Zero Barriers to Business. Uh, and pretty much we wanted to highlight on this page that BMO Business Banking, we're in the forefront of supporting our customers with inclusive banking products and services uh, through our Zero Barriers to Business programs. And we've helped over 2,700 uh, businesses to a tune of $64.8 million, just shy of $65 million. And we've we've dedicated over 650 hours to educational events and webinars such as this today. And so we are happy to be here to present uh, the language of business. You can, you can advance the slide. This is just a quick disclaimer about the materials which will be made available to you after this presentation. And while this presentation is heavy on content, we're going to touch on some things and then allow you time to ask questions. And if we don't answer all your questions today, feel free to contact Letty or myself. Next screen, please. So as a quick introduction, uh, the common reasons for businesses uh, that, fall, uh, that fail is not that there is not a passionate for uh, the business. We understand business owners are very passionate and they really know how to generate the revenue. But there seems to be a gap in understanding business financials. Thus, learning the language of, of business financials is really, really important. Uh, so there's three basic financial statements that we'll review today, the balance sheet, profit and loss statement, and cash flow statement. And we'll also uh, look at key financial ratios that impact your business, key figures for from your, back, your business tax returns, debt service coverage, uh, financial tips to ensure the success of your business. We'll wrap up our presentation today. Next slide, please. I don't know why the slide is looking a little crazy, but we'll just proceed. So understanding your overall financial position, your personal and business credit history is so important. So we'll take a look at that today. A lot of businesses are not even aware that there is a business credit history out there. And so we want to make sure that you're aware that it exists and it, how it impacts the decision when banks are looking at underwriting. Your financial statements, pretty much, it is telling us about your business. It's a picture of how your business has done in the past, current, and in some respect, if we're looking at projections, how do you feel about your business going forward? And we'll take a look at uh, uh, external factors as an underwriter, as a financial institution, because the economic in industry conditions are very important in considering and evaluating uh, uh, your, your lending capacity, also your decision and your strategic plans for the year. Next slide, please. So understanding key financial, um, oh, that got so small. <laughs> Where did it go? Are you seeing the presentation? Ah, there we are. So understanding key financial statements, it is, it is very important to be vigilant about understanding uh, these particular parts of your business because you'll be asked to uh, pro uh, provide that not only to a financial institution, but maybe to an a investor, investor. And you should be able to have a quick elevator speech to talk about your balance sheet, your income statement, and your cash flow and how the business is doing. Uh, those factors you can project your future revenue, your cash flow, and your expenses, and you can make major purchase decisions. Anticipating and, and mitigating risk is real important in how it impacts your financial statements. We'll take a quick look at that throughout the presentation. Next slide, please. So the importance of keeping basic financial statements, it assists you to properly manage and grow your business, 
You need reliable data on the financial health of your business and understanding the language. Uh, again, that's why we're here today to talk about the language of your financial statements. The best way to understand your, the financial health of your business, maintain business uh, financial statements, uh, use software such as QuickBooks, uh, have a good, strong relationship with your accountant uh, so that you can have complete and accurate financial statements when possible. To enable uh, your bookkeeper uh, to have access to your information, again, uh, things that we look at is your business checking, savings, and credit uh, card that debt you have. So you need to provide that to your accountant. And those particular accounts may use something like QuickBooks uh, Fresh or Sage, but you should also use those platforms too because it's easy to get the information over to your accountant. If you have someone that can internally or you're very good at managing uh, entering the data. So keeping an accurate picture of your business financials through financial statements will help you understand whether your business is making or losing money, how profitable you are. Letty and I can attest that when we ask the question of how profitable is, is your business in our conversations with businesses, we tend to get the revenue number at the top, but we don't get the, that bottom line number, how profitable are you? So just understand when someone asks you how profitable, that is really driving right to the bottom line. Know your cash flow, your sales and revenues and expense. And let tax, uh, let tax agencies, uh, potential partners and investors and bankers know how you're doing. It is good to develop a good working relationship with your bank. Uh, get to know the person that you can pick up the phone and call and say, hey, things are doing well. I don't necessarily need anything. I just want to make sure you're still there, Mr. or Mrs. Miss Banker. Or if you need something, you've developed a relationship that they understand your business. And hopefully if there's some things that are not quite per perfect or great, there's some mitigants that they can talk to you about. Check, set short-term and long-term business goals. That means short-term, what do you what do you plan to do this year? You can get even as uh, granular as the next six month, months, especially if you have an industry that is that has a lot of ebbs and flows that are seasonal. And make other business-related strategic decisions such as staffing, uh, changes in pricing adjustments, uh, Pricing adjustments are so important because you want, and we'll take a look at gross margin as well. You want to be able to make sure that you're staying in front of the curve on your pricing. For example, we, I met with a business owner and they run a coffee shop and they sell sandwiches. And if you all uh, remember, we had this little thing called the egg price increase. And so that was really impacting uh, his business because he uses a lot of eggs. But because he stayed in tune with what was happening in the market, he made a, strate a strategic decision that I'm not going to pass this cost on because my build I'm building my business and I don't want to turn my customers away. I want them to stay loyal. So he did not pass that cost on. But that might not be the case for your business. You may have to pass on a price increase, a cost increase increase that uh, you're experiencing so that you can maintain the proper gross margins for your business. Next slide, please. Letty, I'm going to turn it over to you. Financial statements. Thank you. So Vashan's gone over quite a bit of some information this morning. Um, I mean, this afternoon so far regarding balance sheet, profit and loss and um, your cash flow. So now we're going to dig deep because we really want you to understand what does this mean when you hear balance sheet? What is on this balance sheet? How does it look? How do I make one? So we're going to explain to you what it is and we're going to show you templates of each one. Can we go to the next slide? So when you think of a balance sheet, your balance sheet is going to have your assets, equal liabilities, plus owner's equity. So first, what does the balance sheet do? It provides a snapshot of your practice finance at a given point of time. 
right? So whatever your industry is, whatever your business is, it's going to give us for this particular point of time. It could be three months, it could be six months, it could be for a year. We normally recommend that you keep up with your balance sheet every three months, minimally every six months for sure. It can be updated at any time throughout the year, but more commonly, as I said, end of year reporting, such as month end, quarter of the year, quarter or year. It keeps track of your assets. So let's talk about assets. Assets is what you own. So if you have equipment, those are your assets, right? Liabilities is what you owe. So if you have any business debt, if you owe a vendor for your equipment, if you owe a vendor for any inventory, so it's what you owe. And equity, what you own after subtracting what you owe. So it's what you own after you subtract what you owe is your equity. So the late of a business plan reflects the basic accounting equation. Assets equal your liabilities plus the owner's equity. Let's dig into some of these terms. Assets, there's two kinds of forms of assets typically. Current assets will be converted into cash within one year. So cash accounts receivable. So we do have, um, We'll go over what accounts receivable looks like for you later on the presentation. We've actually included an example of that so you can actually see what that looks like because that's part of your current assets. Remember, assets is what you own, right? So accounts receivable is money that you should be receiving. Inventory. So when you think of current assets, it's cash that you have within the year. It's accounts receivable and your inventory because your inventory eventually is going to turn you into monies received. Long-term assets are for more so, or what we call fixed assets. These will not be converted into cash within one year. So typically your equipment. We always like to tell our business owners, keep a running list of your equipment, right? Whether it's a desk and a chair, it's your equipment. Whether it's the coffee maker that you make your machine with, or whether it's the oven that you make your pizza with, right? Whatever that is. Um, keep a list of your equipment, your furniture, um, building, if you own a building, right? Um, any land and any long-term investments. So that's when you look at long-term assets. Liabilities. Current liabilities will be paid for within one year. So again, remember liabilities is what you owe, right? So that's accounts payable. What are things that you need to pay? We also have a view of that that we can that we will show you momentarily so you can actually see how an accounts payable report looks like as well. Um, taxes, if you own any taxes or if you have any short-term debt. Short-term debt can be business credit card, line of credit, etc. Long-term liabilities. This is what will not be paid off in a year. So say, for example, you have a mortgage, right? You have a commercial real estate, deferred income tax, et cetera. And then let's review equity. So again, equity is the difference between total assets and total liabilities. So again, when you think of all your financial statements, they're kind of really one big math problems, right? You take your assets minus your liabilities and your equity. That's what goes onto your balance sheet. Next slide. So here is an example. We wanted to make sure that we showed you an example of what a balance sheet actually looks like. And again, we always just like to remind, remind you of certain terms because again, this is the language of finance, right? So your total assets should be equal to your total liabilities plus total equity. So if you look at the very top period, it's gonna tell you assets first, current assets, list your cash. So cash is what you have in checking, savings, et cetera. Accounts receivable. Inventory, right? You should know what is that inventory dollar amount? Okay, yeah, you have 10 packages of X and I have 100 packages of X, but what is the dollar value to that inventory? That's why it's really good for each and every business owner to be in the know of these numbers, right? Um, and you see there's two columns, previous period and current period. So again, if you're doing this monthly, you're going to have what you had from the previous month to what you have current month. If you do it quarter by quarter or every six months, so previous period versus quarter period, because then it can let you allow you to see at a nice glance what has changed, what has increased, what has been affected, right? So you as a business owner can stay in the know of your total assets. So again, 
assets, total current assets over total fixed assets, right? Those are the two types of assets that you will have. Then we go into liquid, we go into liabilities and equity. So again, current liabilities, accounts payable, credit card debt, line of credit, right? What we've mentioned, long-term commercial loan, commercial mortgage, vehicle loan. Maybe you have a vehicle as business owners, if your vehicle is being used for your business, that's a liability if you have a loan on it. And also just to note that you can have your vehicle, the name of your business, which is nice if you use it for your business, because that's also a tax deduction. Another conversation for another call, right? Nonetheless, then we go into your equity. Investment capital, retained earnings, and any dividends or owners that you may have draw. So when you look at that, that is your total liabilities and equity. You bring all those line numbers down, and then it's going to give you a balance. And if you see here, it's one number minus in the other. So that is your balance sheet. We're not going to go into profit and loss. If we can go to the next slide. So the second financial statement that we want to review with some terms that we want to help everyone understand is what's called your profit and loss. It's also referred to what people will say your PNL or an income statement. This is used to track your revenue, i.e. production and sales. So when we think of the, the word revenue, revenue can be sales if you sell a product, production if you produce a product, and or services. So it's used to track revenue and expenses, ultimately to understand whether your business is profitable. This is, this is a really important statement, right? So it's your net profit. In parentheses, it says loss because sometimes, depending on your business, what stage you're in of your business, you actually, your net profit may be at a loss, right? So net profit equals revenue. What else does this statement allow you to see? It monitors your profit and loss statement will help you determine changes and or improvements that maybe need to be made moving forward right? A word that we all picked up through the pandemic was pivot, right? Do I need to pivot? Do I need to make a change? Um, Rashawn talked about pricing changes. We all know there's been pricing changes. There have been supplier changes. You know, there's increase on cost of goods. So how is that cost of goods increase? How is that impacting your profit and loss? Um, it helps you to identify customer trends, and where sales are going up and well, where sales are going down. It helps you track progress to your business goals. Remember, we mentioned that, right? Everybody has a business goal. How do you monitor that? How do you track to that number? You're going to track through that through your profit and loss. Um, it also allows you to pay close attention to your operating expenses, such as rent, utilities, and supplies. A business that experienced a net loss may look to reduce its operating expenses to return it to the black, right? Maybe where you're leasing your business from, maybe the lease has gone up, maybe that price has gone up. Is that gonna be a location that you wanna to continue to stay or do you need to look to maybe move the business because that's an expense that you don't know if you can maintain or is that digging into your profit, right? And creating a loss. Keep in mind that your profit and loss statement represents revenue and expenses over a specified time, whereas your balance sheet, which shows your financial condition at a point in time. So let's go ahead and take a look at a profit and loss statement. Next slide. So as we mentioned, I wanna go over a couple terms that you're gonna see on this slide as well. Cash versus non-cash expense. So again, if you see here, there's two columns, previous period and current period. We start off with your sales. Then we're gonna say less cost of goods sold, right? So let's look at cash first, non-cash non expense. Cash expenses include payments made in the form of physical cash, check, electronic funds transfer, and or debit card. Non-cash expenses are those expenses that are recorded in the income, but do not involve an actual cash transaction. Depreciation, amortization. So to give you an idea of depreciation, depreciation can be a dollar amount that you put to your equipment. Depending on the equipment you have, some equipment depreciates in value over time, right? That actually would be what you call a non-cash expense. 
While they may not impact the net cash flow of the business, these expenses impact the bottom line of your income statement and result in lower reported earnings. So also depreciation is something that goes on your business tax return and is something that we call as an add back, right? So yeah, you're going to have it here as possibly a loss because it's depreciation. But then on the flip end, when you come to a bank, we utilize that depreciation number and we add it back into your net income. So just note those, note a piece of those that information. Um, when we go over your operating expenses, so when you look at that, it's your owner's salary. So we always say, make sure you pay yourself something, right? I don't care if it's a dollar, but make sure that you're paying yourself something as an owner. Then we go into staff salary if you have staff, rent, utilities, et cetera. So those are all your operating expenses. So then you have your gross income your operating expenses, and then you're gonna take your interest income, other non-operating expenses, and that's total income. And when you divide those two together, I'm sorry, minus those two, you're gonna come up with what we call your net profit or your net loss, right? Because it doesn't always have to be a loss, there can be a profit. A few other items that we said here is a positive figure at the bottom of your profit and loss means that your business is profitable right? If there's a negative figure at the bottom of your profit and loss, it means your business is running at a loss, which, significant, which signifies that the business is not earning sufficient revenue to cover its expenses. So that's why when you look at this profit and loss, it's going to be extremely important for you as a business owner to know, right? Do I need to increase my prices? Do I need to compare some suppliers? right? What are my rent look like? What's my utility? My insurance for my business. Maybe my insurance has gone up. Do I need to really go and ask my, my company, can we review my insurance, right? So this gives you a nice view to say, am I making money or am I losing money? And everything on here will allow you to take that view. So again, sometimes you give a lot of this to your accountant to take care of, which we're firm believers that you want to have an accountant in your corner. But you as a business owner, always you want to make sure that you can be in the know of these numbers. Because you want to know, am I making money or am I losing money? You don't want to wait to the end of the year thinking, oh, well, my gross sales is X. I've been making, you know, X, Y, Z every month. But then when you go over your expenses, your expenses exceed your sales. Then when you come to a bank, how does that impact you? Well, you're thinking, oh, I made 200000 for the year, but my net income was at a loss, right? So very important information for you to have as a business owner. We're now going to go into the third financial statement that we mentioned, which is your cash flow statement. Cash flow is the inflow and outflow of cash and cash equivalents, i.e., cash held at a bank deposits, short-term investments, or cash that can be converted into assets. It's used to report the cash generated and spent during a specific period of time. It shows you your liquidity, how much operating cash you have, and it could also be used to help you create cash flow projections to help with business planning. So a lot of times that you're going to say, well, okay, this is what I've made so far. Well, I'm projecting that by the end of the year, I can make X. Well, how do you come up with that projection through your cash flow statement? It acts as a bridge between the balance sheet and a profit and loss by showing how money's moved in and out of your business. It lays out a cash flow statement reflects three primary categories, operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. Let's go into the definition of all three. Cash flow from your business revenue generating activities of the business, i.e. construction, income materials, supplies, purchases, right? So cash flow from your principal revenue, how are you making your money, right? Cash flow from any other activities that are not investing or financing from current assets and current liabilities. That's why you need to know, well, what are my current assets and what are my current liabilities? Because that's how you're going to know what are those other operating activities that you need to add. Investing activities is cash flow from the acquisition or disposal of long-term term assets. Maybe you sold a big piece of equipment. Um, 
customer I was working with, she does beauty products and she sells and she manufactures certain beauty products. Well, she had some equipment that was in her warehouse that she was like, well, you know something, this is a really big, big piece of equipment. I don't think I'm no longer going to need it. I'm going to sell it. And that piece of equipment was into the tune of almost $300,000. So once she sells that piece of equipment, it's now going to turn into an investable asset for her, right? So again, just kind of thinking, what is that? What are those assets, right? What is that disposable of long-term asset? It was an asset for her. Now she's going to sell it. So it becomes an investable activity. And then it goes into explaining and other investments not included in cash flow equivalents. The third is our financing activities. Cash flow that results in changes in the size of composition of the contributed equity, capital of the borrower, practice. So example, if you have any loans, if you've invested in any bonds, any stocks, any dividends, so do you have any investors that you're paying a dividend out to or that you're receiving um, anything from, um, i.e. paying your borrowing and paying your loans, right? So financing activities, if you have a loan that you've paid off, if you have a loan that you've received, right? So there's different types of financing activities that include a few of the examples here. Let's take a quick look at what that cash flow statement looks like. Here's an example of your cash flow statement. Some, some other definitions that we provided is negative cash flow and positive cash flow, right? Because again, when we were talking about the cash flow, it was a net profit or net loss. Well, that's the difference between a negative cash flow and a positive cash flow. So again, you see there's always two periods, right? Your previous period and your current period. So these are all working documents that you wanna make sure that you keep a running total of what's happening within each category. For example, net income. So these are your additions, depreciation and amortization, increase in your accounts payable, decrease in prepaid expenses. You're gonna subtract increase in inventory, increase in accounts receivable. Again, we'll show you your accounts payable and we'll show you your accounts receivable, how that looks. Because most business has some type of accounts receivable and, and accounts payable as well. And this is gonna be your net cash from operations. That's the top part of your cash flow statement. Then you go into the middle. This is your cash flow from investing. Remember, we said there's three forms, right? Operating, investing, and financing. So that's how your cash flow statement goes into. Purchase of long-term assets. Those are your equipment right, and or real estate and or vehicles. Um, proceeds from a sale of a long-term asset. As I told you, if you sell a piece of equipment, money that you've made from that, we want you to put that here. The third part is your cash flow from financing. So, you know, issuance of debt, issuance of equity, repayment of debt. As I mentioned, maybe you paid off a credit card, maybe you paid off a line of credit, right? Or repayment of equity. That's typically if you have an owner that's getting, maybe they've invested and they put in um, some dollars and now they're gonna pay back and now they're gonna take their equity back out, correct? Um, net increase or decrease in cash. So if you've had a big purchase and now you wanna pay off a piece of your debt, well, that's gonna be a decrease into your cash that you had on hand right? And that's typically going to balance itself out. So we've gone over the three statements. We've gone over a lot of different information that we have thus far. If we can go to our uh, the next slide, um, a couple of things that we want to make sure that we continue to discuss. Um, next slide, please. So paying attention to key financial ratios. So now we're gonna go into a few key financial ratios, but all the information that we discussed takes you into helping understand what we're gonna discuss next with these financial terms. When you're reviewing your financial statements, consider taking time to calculate some of the key financial ratios to better understand the health and the strength of your business. There are many different financial ratios a business may use. We're gonna suggest going over four of them because these four we feel directly impact the, all the statements that we just reviewed. So we can go to the next slide. So this is understanding financial ratios. So I'm gonna go over the first one with you. And again, as we said, and um, apologize if the slide looks a little 
Um, you can't read the top part here, but of the personal income. The first one is what we call debt service coverage ratio. This is what every bank looks at when you apply for a loan with the bank. When we talk about, you know, some of you may have heard, what are the five C's of credit? Well, one of them is capacity. The bank wants to look at my capacity, right? What does that mean for me as a business owner? The capacity is otherwise known as what we call debt service coverage, right? The bank is going to determine the loan amount you qualify for by combining your personal and business income to ensure you have the capacity to make loan payments from your total income. Business income is determined by using your tax return or counter-prepared financial statements, which reflects the ability of a company to generate profits. So that's why we wanted to review those statements first, because yes, we want every business to prepare a tax return, but maybe you're doing something mid-year, six months in, and now you know based on your profit and loss, your business is making more money than it did last year right? And you want us to know that. How are you going to allow the bank to know that? Well, you're going to have a prepared financial statement to show, hey, my profit and loss are showing my projections that I'm projected to make double what I made last year. Now, it's not just the revenue, it's the net income, right? So now I want you guys to look at each box here because again, as I mentioned, these are, it's one big math problem. If you look on the side, on the left side, it says wages and other types of income. We add that, and we're going to subtract. We're going to subtract personal debt payments, personal taxes, and living expenses. So I want you guys to remember: every time that you come and apply, we are the bank is also always going to look at your personal income and your personal living expenses. Sometimes individuals have said. Oh, well, I don't really, I don't, I, I didn't make no money for the business. Well, typically the first year or two that happens. That's why we always suggest having a few different streams of income to ensure that you can afford to live, right? Because no matter what you apply for, a piece of living expenses or a certain percentage based on your demographic that we're going to add. So maybe you say, well, my husband pays the mortgage completely or my wife pays the mortgage completely. You still have to live. So always remember that we're going to minus some type of living expense, personal income. Now we go to the second box, which is business income. So we take the plus and minus, whatever that dollar amount is, now we're going to add it to your net income. And remember, when we mentioned net income, we reviewed one of our financial statements that says we, we look at that net income. Is that net income positive or is it negative? right? I mentioned to you when we were going through some of those financial statements, there's certain things that we can add back. This is where we add them back. Interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, which is what we call that non-cash, right? So we take your personal income plus your business income, and then we're going to divide it into business debt service. So that means any business debt that you have today and or business debt that you want to have in the future. And that's going to equal what we call your debt service coverage. Typically, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, industry standard, bank to bank, financial institution to financial institution, most banks say they want you to have 1.25 to 1. What does that mean for me as a business owner? This means they want you to have a dollar and 25 cents in personal and business net income to every dollar of business debt, right? So they want you to have a dollar and a quarter for every dollar you have. Part of our program here at BMO, we look for one to one, right? We want you to have a dollar and 10 cents to every dollar in debt. So certain, certain programs may be a little differently, but we wanted to teach you industry standard. This is what they look for. <clears throat> I'm sorry. That's why it's extremely important for you as a business owner to know your numbers and know what we're talking about when we say, what's your net income? Did you have any depreciation? So we'll go into the next set of ratios. Assess your profitability with your net profit margin ratio. What does this mean? How am I going to assess my profitability and what's my net profit margin? 
net profit margin is the percentage of your revenue remaining after you pay all your operating expenses, interest, and taxes. It shows how successful a business is at managing costs and converting revenue into profits. So total revenue, you need to know. What are your sales from your profit and loss statement? We just went over our profit and loss, right? So that's how you know what your total revenue number is. We want you to minus that from your total operating expenses from your profit and loss statement. So remember, there's two pieces of that profit and loss, right? Your 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 profit and then your loss. So we want those those two pieces of information, and then we divide it over your total revenue, right? So whatever the total revenue amount is, we're going to divide that, and that equals your net profit margin number. So your net profit margin measures how much profit remains from each dollar in sales. So what does industry standard say? 15% profit margin means that for every dollar in sales, the company keeps 15 cents as profit. Now this is what they just say like as industry standard, right? Different industry that you're in may have a different industry profit margin. But 15%, or as we say, 15 cents, is what industry standard states. I'm going to turn it back to Vashon, so she's going to walk us through a few more ratios. Can't hear you. Okay, I was on mute. Sorry about that. Uh, but we mentioned earlier that businesses do not fail because of a lack of passion. Business, businesses tend to have a lot of stress or fail because of the lack of understanding of what the financial statements are saying to them. And so we will continue on at looking at uh, ratios uh, because they're good to understand. And these are quick math problems that you can do with your business today or as you're looking to project out uh, your business revenue and expenses and profit, those type of things, and you're looking to project. So it gives you a good way to um, start the process. So assess your profitability with net profit uh, margin. Uh, your, I believe, is this the one that you just went over, Letty? Um, your sales from your profit and loss statement minus your total expenses divided by revenue, that is going to give you your ratio and 15% profit margin is an industry standard standard kind of in general, but you would want to look at that um, for your industry. You can advance the slide, please. Advance the slide, please. Thank you. Okay, understanding your capacity to meet short-term obligation, that's your current ratio. So your current or sometimes referred to as a quick ratio is very useful in uh, with, uh, useful for businesses with current liability. So current liabilities, again, just repeating some of the things that Letty said, cash, marketable securities, accounts receivable. Minus your current liabilities, your accounts payable, short-term loan payments, payroll, business credit card, uh, interest expense, other, and other accrued expenses. You minus those and you divide it by your current liability. So you've already calculated your current liability, so you have your bottom line. So what does this mean? The current ratio um, measures your liquidity, telling you whether you have enough current assets um, to cover your liabilities. So say, for instance, you needed to liquidate. You want to know, can I walk away from this situation and be okay? A ratio of 2.0 means that you have $2 in liquid assets available to cover each dollar of your current liabilities. Again, knowing this about your business, taking a look at your balance sheet uh, and your income and expense statements on a monthly basis, having those meetings with your accountant is really important to measure how you're doing with your business and then gives you a helps you develop a strategy to get to the, some of the ratios that we're mentioning. You can advance to the next slide. 
So key figures from your business tax returns. This is just a quick snapshot. And I would say pretty much, you know, uh, again, we're going to send you the deck so that you can take your time with the, all the content in here. But these, uh, this particular slide indicates some of the, th the information that we are going to ask uh, with the completion of a business uh, loan application. There's a term there, EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization. This is a metric used to evaluate a business operating performance. You'll hear that, especially as your business grows. You may not hear it if you're your startup, you're in, in the early stages of your business, but you're going to really hear that more as your business continues to grow. And then your ratios, there's other ratios that you'll uh, learn as well as you get into more, I'd say, um, fancier type of financing. You can advance the slide, please. So business financial best practices. Maintain your personal and business banking accounts separately. I can't express that enough. Uh, uh, separate your business from your personal. It helps with your accountant to do your financial statements. And it's just overall good practice. Make sure that you have good cash flow management build your business credit score. And so you could do that it, by first understanding if you get uh, credit for the business, you want it in the business name, and then understanding the, um, the whoever is extending the credit, whether it be a bank or let's say an office supply or equipment supply store, do they report that to the business small business exchange, which for BMO, we do that for our business customers. We report to the exchange so that you can start building business credit because that is something that is looked at when considering extending credit. Aid in tax reporting and assessment of your business performances by uh, taking a look at your business um, statements and establish, it establishes professional and business credibility. You can go back. Thank you. Review your business financials regularly. We talked about that really good. Uh, understanding your revenues, expenses, and profitability. Calculate, calculate your working capital. We have some uh, slides in the back of this presentation that can help you with that. You can uh, locate it on our website. It's a free tool. Identify and monitor trends of your financial state, uh, your financials, and leverage the financials to inform you to make great business decisions create a business plan and update it often. We often um, uh, talk to businesses that have just really just started the business. It was something that they did on the side. It started generating money. And so they decided to make it a business, but there's no business plan. Create a business plan. It is a roadmap to your strategy and helping you to meet your goals. And then you can adjust as adjust those things as your business grows. Consider consumer demand and comp the consider consider the consumer demand and competitive environment. This goes back again to the industry, what's happening within the industry, what's happening with economics. Uh, subscribe to your industry um, uh, if there's a subscription out there that it that's directly related to your industry, subscribe to that. They're going to keep you up to date as to what's happening in your industry. Always, always stay connected. Assess, monitor, the, and assess and monitor your risk and use your plan to make better business decision. And finally, enlist professional help. An attorney will help you choose the right legal structure for your business to help protect you personally. Also, an accountant will leverage um, uh, you should leverage your accountant and banker to guide your financial health and progress. Your accountant can also, in conjunction with your attorney, when talking about your legal structure, identify what's best for you and what your strategy. What's best for one person is not always good for your business. And so having those conversations is, is really important. And seek help from other service providers, such as a marketing consultant, to help your business thrive. Letty and I always say that uh, you have to have a, an accountant, an attorney, 
your banker, and also what's not in here is insurance. Understand that you need insurance coverage for your business. Next slide, please. So the top three takeaways for today, position yourself for personal and business financial stability and growth. Strive for continual improvement. It's not a one and done. It is actually getting down and knowing the numbers. Seek out educational tools and resources. Uh, visit our program website frequently for webinars, templates that are free and, and, and more. You can subscribe to our email list to get a free business resource uh, guide with tips and advice to deliver uh, that delivers straight uh, to your inbox so you don't have to go anywhere. It's a quarterly. And you build a network of trusted experts, mentors, and advisors. No one can do it alone. It does take a village to help you start your business, to grow your business, and ultimately expand your business beyond your wildest dreams. Next slide. So let's connect. If you'd like to connect with Letty or I, uh, the email is in the um, on the screen there, zero barriers to business at bmo.com. And please visit our website because it has a wealth of free resources, uh, such as some of the tools that are in the back of this particular presentation. I know we're at 1254, but if you want to click through some of the items real quickly, I promise we will go real quick. Can you click to the back uh, after it says, thank you for attending. We just want them to take a view at some of the tools that we've included. So here's your cash flow forecast tool. We were talking about your cash flow statement. This is a tool, as Vashan mentioned, that you can go right to our site and it's an open template that you can play around and add numbers, right? So if you want to really forecast your cash flow, you can go in there and put different sales you have, other revenue, accounting fees, and much more. And it'll tell you really what you can forecast your, your cash flow to potentially be. Next is the accounts receivable aging report. This is just a snapshot of a report. Generally, if you use QuickBook, you can do you can create an accounts receivable aging report for a lender. It, um, it if a lender is lending off of receivables, just understand the, the advance rate is going to depend on how aged your receivables are, and so understand the underwriting rules of that financial institution. The next slide is account payable aging report. Again, another report that you should be able to develop out of your QuickBook application, something you want to, want to take a look at often. You may be asked to, uh, to provide both of these reports uh, when you're seeking financing. And the last page is useful, useful, other useful banking language that you could take a look at at your leisure. At this point, we are going to end the presentation and try to take as many questions as possible. And again, if we can't get to your question, please reach out to uh, Letty or I. We will love, love to have a conversation with you. So it looks like there's one. Are there any agencies that prepare business tax returns for free? So business tax returns for free, not that I'm aware of, but I can tell you that sometimes chambers will have different resources. So if you want to look at your local chamber, sometimes they have different times of the year that maybe they may have an account to come and help review that. Um, I know that some nonprofits within the community also may have like a tax preparer come in and provide information. Um, as far as free business tax preparation, I am not aware of any resources currently um, yeah. that are available. Normally yeah. there's always a cost to that. Um, but again, there's always a cost to do business. So, and sometimes it's maybe only a hundred dollars, maybe to like, you know, they're not in the thousands guys, but you do want to start to research within your community and asking sometimes your banker and or chamber if they have a couple of references of business tax preparers that they could refer you to, you know, and then maybe you can, you know, set up a plan yeah. with them. That's how you form a relationship. Yeah, I, I would say the networking is real important uh, to identify an accountant that they, you may have get an accountant that says, hey, I know you're just starting out. I'm going to cut the cost for you or they may do it for you for free because it's the first time. But it's developing that relationship through your yep. networking opportunities and engaging in your community, uh, such organizations as the Chamber of Commerce, um, the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, 
You have the Chicago Urban League that has a coach. They have coaches on their website that you could talk to that are accountants. Yeah. I don't know if there's any other questions that came in. If our team, uh, I'm trying to go through comments. Um, I don't see any other questions at the moment. Thank you for supplying our information in the comments as well. And I believe we also mentioned on our site, we also have a way that each and every one of you can also refree, receive coaching from one of our bankers as well, right? You can sign up for our coach in the corner and receive that 30 minute one-on-one -on -one with one of our banking professionals as well. Um, so that's another opportunity that you have um, in addition to reaching out to, to us here um, directly. So when someone comes in, what basic, wait, what was that? Oh, so when someone comes in, what basic forms should they have in their folder? Well, it depends on what kind of business you have and what stage you're at, right? I mean, minimally, have you been incorporated? So if you're coming to start a relationship with the bank, um, you know, are you, have you been incorporated? Do you have your tax ID, right? Um, if you've been in business for at least a year, um, they, you know, minimally, you may want to have at least your profit and loss, right? Or your balance sheet. Some, sometimes you may not do all three based on your business and the stage of the business you're in. Um, again, if you've been in business at least one year, we probably will be looking for you to have um, at least your most recent tax return as well if you're looking for lending, right? Um, when you're looking for larger loans, like commercial loans, commercial real estate, that type, um, sometimes our business relationship managers will ask for your most recent profit and loss because your tax return is from last year. We want to know now it's six months in. So where are you at at this point in time? Right. So those are just some of the basic ones that you may need to have um, just to at least start. Yeah. And understanding that if you're a startup business, the your first initial loan is probably going to be the most difficult one that you get. And so we work alongside community uh, development, financial institution, what, better known as CDFIs. And so through that collaboration, if we're not able to extend credit, we work with that organization on a referral basis to see if they can align and, and give you access to capital, capital in the interim. It is truly should be considered interim financi uh, financing because you would want to be able to come back to your bank to get cheaper financing because always understand a loan has interest. Interest is an expense and expense uh, creeps into your cash flow. Yes. Great questions. And, and, and we have to say this because it wouldn't be when you say startup and we say it for startup and existing, but definitely for startup business plan. That's really something that you want to have. Um, also on our site, do we have a template for our business plan that you could review step by step what each section of a business plan needs to have? Right. And sometimes that's also the hardest thing to get going, but it helps you put all your thoughts on paper. Right. Like you specialize in your craft, in your industry, but you need to put your business into a plan. And then it also is going to help you on a go forward basis as well. So I know Cynthia Battle Clark's a startup. Start with a business plan. Because a lot of individuals also say, well, SBA, I want to do SBA lending. SBA is great. But I can guarantee any type, first, any SBA that you want to do, you have to come through a bank. So you have to have a relationship with the bank. And secondly, every time you do anything with startups, um, I'm sorry, with SBA, they want to see your plan. They're always going to want to see a business plan. So to the organizations, as Vashan mentioned, the CDFIs, they typically always like to see a business plan as well. And let me say thank you for showing up for yourself today, because yeah. this is part of being successful in the business. You showed up today for yourself and for your business to get some more information. And hopefully we're just really reiterating some information that you already knew. And if you didn't know it, again, the, the uh, presentation today will be made available for you to refer back to it at any time. I know we're a little past one, but we definitely just want to do another check for questions and then we can turn it to our 
team at the city treasurer to see if there's anything that they'd like to close us out with. We just want to say thank you so much to BMO for being with us today. The language of business finance was awesome. We're going to make sure these uh, presentations are available on our website at chicagocitytreasurer.com. We'll also be sending an email of this rebroadcast to everyone who registered for the session as well. So thank you so much, Vashon, Letty, for being here today for Money Smart Week 2023 at the Treasurer's Office. We appreciate it. You're thank welcome. You for the invitation. It's our pleasure. All right. Everyone have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.